A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, when Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the farther they went from me, sacrificing to the balls and burning incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk, who took them in my arms. I drew them with human cords, with bands of love. I fostered them like one who raises an infant to his cheeks. Yet, though I stooped to feed my child, they did not know that I was their healer. My heart is overwhelmed, my pity is stirred. I will not give vent to my blazing anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again. For I am God and not man, the Holy One present among you. I will not let the flames consume you. Verbum Domini. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. Dominus Fobiscum, et cum Spiritus Tuo, Lectio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matteum, Gloria Sibi Domine. Jesus said to his apostles, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journeys or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves their keep, his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you. It will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gormiah 
on the day of judgment than for that town. Verbum Domini. May Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Amen. My dear brothers in the priesthood, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, especially you, the friars here, I bring you the blessings and the greetings of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and of the Church of Rome, and therefore of the Universal Church. We are celebrating the votive mass of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, but especially Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church. On the cross, on Calvary, Jesus said to John, Behold your mother, and to his Blessed Mother, Behold your son. Our Savior was declaring what was already there, we have very strong reasons to venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is the mother of God. Her greatest title, because her son, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, always God, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, consubstantial with the Father. In the fullness of time, took on human nature. For love of us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And she bore him in her virginal womb for nine months and gave him to the world in Bethlehem, the day we call Christmas Day. So she's... That child in Bethlehem is the same that was in Nazareth, the same that was on Calvary, the same that rose again on the third day, the same person, God, now also man, two natures, one person, the mother is the mother of God, God the Son, who took on human nature. But more than that, or together with that, the Blessed Virgin Mary is mother of our Savior because her son redeemed all humanity from the original sin of Adam and Eve and our personal sins. Christ is the Savior, the one Savior. There is no other Savior. There is no other name given to people on earth under which we are to be saved. Christ is the Savior. The Blessed Virgin Mary is therefore the mother of all those who are one with Christ, primarily Christians, all those who are baptized, who have been incorporated with Christ and the church. But the Blessed Virgin Mary is also the mother of all humanity, even those who do not know Christ, because all are called in Christ. The Blessed Virgin Mary was declared Mother of God. She always was, but was so declared as dogma in the Council of Ephesus, the year 431. Blessed Paul VI, soon to be canonized, declared her Mother of the Church during the Second Vatican Council in 1964. The Blessed Virgin Mary did not become nine mother of the church in 1964. That's clear. Long, 
she was mother of Christ because mother of the church because mother of Christ. And because the church is the mystical Christ, all those who are the church are one with Christ. So the Blessed Virgin Mary was mother of the church from the day the archangel Gabriel announced to her, you will be the mother of God, and she accepted. But declared, to declare it is, is also a very happy thing, and that was in 1964. And to make it happier still, there has always been the votive mass of Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church. But this year, Pope Francis declared that that celebration is now to be an obligatory memorial to be celebrated the day after Pentecost. Very logical. The Blessed Virgin Mary was full of grace. She was the seat of wisdom because her son is wisdom itself, the wisdom of God made visible. If anybody wanted a proof, go to the marriage feast of Cana. The wine was falling short. You just imagine wedding without wine. What would the young people say? <laughs> the Blessed Virgin Mary saw that. She said to her son, they have no wine. In English, four words. From the reply of Christ, you see that he didn't mean to start working miracles that time. But his mother had, had spoken. She didn't argue. She said nothing more to him. But she said to the servants, whatever he says to you, you do. So Christ said, well, my mother wants a miracle. Very good. They're going to have it told the servants, these big water pots, <laughs> fill them with water, six pots, full of sparkling wine, whether you call it champagne or whatever other name you call it. The master of ceremonies, you know that person who picks up microphone and talks a bit too much at ceremonies, talked a lot. He didn't know where the wine came from. It was an example, a symbol, a sign of the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary through which we get the graces of salvation in abundance, plenty and beautiful and abundant through her intercession. All generations we call Mary blessed. It is therefore God who made the Blessed Virgin Mary great. It is not we who invented her greatness. It is not the Pope who made Mary great. Mary was already great from the day the archangel came, and even before, because she was conceived exceptionally, without original sin, full of grace. Therefore, to manifest Marian devotion is normal. A Christian who doesn't love Our Lady or doesn't venerate her Somebody should inform that Christian, you are not normal. <laughs> Read the gospel. Read Matthew chapters 1 and 2, Luke chapters 1 and 2, John chapter 2, Cana, or if you like, chapter 19, John, Calvary. After that, you still want to talk? Thank God for the wonders he has done in the Blessed Virgin Mary. God is our loving Father. He treats us as his children. In the gospel just read, <laughs> the God says through the prophet, I treat you like a child that I take and bring to my cheeks. He treated the chosen people like his babies, his children. God knows we need a mother. A child without a mother isn't all right, you know. God knew that and gave us such a mother. Pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary, particularly the Hail Mary. You can't invent a better prayer to her. The Rosary, which is mainly Hail Mary, all centered around the mysteries of Christ. The Rosary is Christocentric. Visit her shrines. 
strive to imitate the virtues of the Blessed Virgin Mary, especially her faith. When the angel came and announced what never happened before, she didn't argue. She didn't get six lawyers to ask the angel to prove she believed. Whereas Zachary doubted and wanted a proof, and he got it immediately. Strive to imitate the Blessed Virgin's obedience, humility, love of God, readiness to bring Christ to others, chastity, total being converted towards being rooted towards God. Entrust your life, your projects to the Blessed Virgin Mary, your joys, your sorrows, your worries, your end. Entrust the church to the Blessed Virgin Mary because the church is very dear to Christ, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. <laughs>